Welcome to the IELTS Chat Podcast with me, Beth, Josh and Ryan. This podcast is all about exploring the big questions, the small moments and everything in between. Whether you're stuck at the shops, in traffic or just looking for some inspiration, our chat is here to keep you engaged. It's time to talk, connect and find meaning in those everyday moments. Welcome to the IELTS Chat. Can you believe Beth is the producer today? You're going straight in with that? Well, got it, haven't you? No pressure, guys. Let's hope this is smooth sailing. <laughs> oh, yeah. Matty's on holiday, so I've had to step in, see how well we get on with this one. I think it's a good show, and of like how um, diverse, diverse is the right word, how diverse we are and how much we're trying to learn as a, as a podcast. I can't even just say as a three, because there's more than three of us, but I mean, as a podcast, how we're changing it up. And unfortunately for Beth, she's been yeah, um, number one in the hot seat. Nominated for the producer seat. How does it feel sitting in Matty's seat? Warm. I, <laughs> actually, <laughs> Warm. It actually feels quite good. I feel quite comfortable, but you know, wait till the end of the podcast. I know, yeah. Make I'm, sure that it's recorded properly and then we'll, <laughs> I'll be happy with that one. <laughs> Beth looks like she's in a bloody job interview. <laughs> it's all I love. On like a radio station. Yeah, yeah. I've got it, don't worry. I've got it. So... Should we dive straight in? Dive straight in. Obviously, this week, as people may know, we haven't been really speaking about weddings lately because weddings haven't been happening on our side, unfortunately. But obviously, people still do get married in January, so it's not just like weddings have stopped. <laughs> just, because it's just us. Just <laughs> us. We don't do that in yeah. January. But since the last podcast we recorded, it's been a very, very busy... Um, been all kinds going busy on. Busy week. Thing. Because we actually recorded a week ago on Monday, and obviously it's Tuesday today. If anyone doesn't know, this probably won't go out on a Tuesday, but yeah, um, a lot happened. Um, and obviously, start off with yourself because you had a busier Friday than us, let's say. Only slightly busier, and it wasn't busy in the sense that I had like all kinds to do, but it was busy in the sense that instead of like hanging around my house throughout the day, me and my beloved, who gets mentioned regularly on this lucky girl, Went to love, Hope Street. I love the way you flash the wedding ring. That was accidental, by the way. <laughs> That's just what I do to everyone these days, just to throw people off the scent. Let people know. No, get off. Yeah. Got away. Hands off. But yeah, we went to uh, Hope Street. Shout out to Hope Street's bar. We went to Hope Street and just sat and chilled for like the build up towards obviously the event that we all went to. Yeah. And it was well needed, I will say, from our point of view, because... Like most people over Christmas, we didn't get like a proper break break. Yeah. We did like quite adventurous things. Obviously, one of them being going on a little adventure a few days with yourselves, didn't we? In a build up. Yeah. And then yeah, Christmas doesn't really like give you time off, does it? No, January. And it, obviously, we're literally at the back end of January now. So I don't even know why we're talking still about Christmas because it was like a month ago. <laughs> <laughs> give me a break. It's, a, it's like March and you're like, yeah, I'm just still getting over the still getting over Christmas. Christmas. Yeah, I'm still carrying this holiday weight. Yeah, that's, that's my excuse anyway. <laughs> Um, but yeah, obviously we met up with you on Friday and your wife, mm -hmm. myself and Beth. Obviously she's not my wife. That came out a little bit. Poorly time. Not yet, guys. We, you know, every <laughs> we're day we're getting a step closer. Friday, as, Fri people, as the young ones call it. Friday. Yeah, so Friday, obviously, we were at Hope Street. We used came, met up with us. We did. To have a little little cheeky pre-drink. We did. Uh, at the Carriage Works within yeah. Hope Street. God, they're getting a lot of shout outs, aren't they? Yeah. And then, yet yeah, we all went down to a wonderful event. Amazing. Run by a good friend of ours who, spoiler alert, she's been on the pod before. Uh, the oh, oh, Harlan. Oh, Harlan, as she's now called. I turned, I turned up on Friday and I said that to her, like joking around. And I saw this, Ian, I'm looking at me like, you've killed it now, Josh. Like, don't <laughs> say it anymore. Don't keep calling me O'Hanlon because it'll stick. Um, so I'm not trying to say don't call it O'Hanlon, but I'm sticking up for you, Abby. It's Hanlon. Um, yeah, boss day, weren't it? Boss night even. I just think, f talking about that, we might as well just talk about that event, seeing it's the most prevalent. As soon as we got in there, you could see, like, Abby's stamp all over it, couldn't you? Like, the way she's so meticulous about her planning. And like she said, when she was on the podcast herself, she notices things. And we notice those things that yeah. she says she noticed now. Like, even just, like, little tiny touches. Like, as soon as we went in, obviously, like, most places, you get, like, a little drink on arrival. But even like the glasses had like little ribbons tied around them and they were on a coaster that was like the event name and stuff like that. Just little tiny, tiny touches, which 
I think, I think that's what's made it. Went a long it, way, I think. I think that's what's made it sort of go into that line of work and like set up on an event um, company because she's obviously got the the eye for it. I think I think people who go into that sort of world setting up a business that is all about the fine details. You've got to know what sort of what is the trends. Are. Yeah. Um, and even from like, I'm not speaking because I'm a man, but I don't really pick up on things like that normally even though I film weddings and I'm always looking for little details. But when I'm just out doing my normal thing, I sort of switch off. And that was the one thing that myself and you, Beth, picked up on, didn't we? We, we sort of loved the little idea of the little ribbon around the glass. Yeah, I, and not only was said it, I heard loads of people as well commenting on the ribbon yeah. around the glass and all the coasters. They had little like personalised messages on, didn't they? Which obviously Abby had thought of. It was yeah. really good. And obviously she got loads of different suppliers in to help her put this event together. But at the end of the day, every single idea was from here. Yeah. And it was just, I can't wait for the next one. It was amazing. Such a oh, good no, night. You know what? You hit the nail on the head there because one, when it was getting to the end of the night, I'm not just saying it in case obviously Abby listens. I was like... She does listen, by the way. I think we clocked that, didn't we, on that day? She's, the few little right. references that she made, I was thinking, you you listen still? <laughs> what are you still listening you for? You still listen. Still you still right. listen. Um... But it got to the end of the night and I thought, I don't, and this is very rare for me because I, I can be a little bit like, right, I've done, I've peaked, I don't want to go home. Mm. It was one of them events Anti-social. where, yeah, I was like, I don't want this to end. I want to, I want to carry on enjoying ourselves. And I think in that last like <coughs> 20 minutes, half an hour, it which all just came alive, didn't it? Like it was, it's like the, I won't say the calm before the storm, that's not correct. But like it was just came to like a big climax, didn't it? Like, yeah, we had our mate Lee Morrison on, on the deck, shout out Lee. Yeah, he came on, didn't he? Little shout out to Lady. Threw a few tunes on, which got got people a bit more active. Yeah, uh, Abby herself had a little sing, which you know went down a treat. I'm sure everyone was uh, appreciating like, that. I feel like we should have writ- writ- written down a list of all the, the suppliers who were there because there were so I many. Know, I know, and I feel like some of them might tune in to listen to this one in particular because we well, went to the events and we're going to talk about it. I mean, this is maybe just popped into my mind because we're talking about it at this very second. But the amount of vendors let's just call them that that we see in their suppliers who we were able to speak to who we don't always get a chance to speak to and speak to about about us and our little selves like it was a pure networking event as much as it was like nice to have a drink and like let your hair down yeah i didn't shut up which is probably normal really but <laughs> well it comes to this part that i wanted to talk about because when we got to the event us today being a three in the podcast turns up Obviously, we had Becky with us as well. Shout out, Becky. Um, but obviously, no one's seen Becky before, so that, that's one of those things. Beth was getting a bracelet done by who was the the? Do you know? The I've person? been waiting to shout out this people. This, <laughs> These this people. people. This girl. Is this the permanent jewelry? So she's called the Charm Gal. The Charm on Gal. Instagram, from what I can remember, I'm sure it's the shout Charm, out Charm Gal. Gal. And she basically does permanent bracelets. So I got a little charm bracelet. Can we see that? We can indeed. I got a charm bracelet and it's permanent. So basically it's stuck <laughs> on your hand. It won't come off. I mean, you could cut it off if you wanted to, but I'm keeping this on for life. So on my wedding day, when I get married, oh, charm she'll... gal will be on my wrist. She'll be a part of it. Well, this brings me well, on. We'll get to that. <laughs> this brings me on very nicely. As Beth is getting her bracelet done, obviously it took about five minutes to obviously put together, put it on Beth's wrist. And I'm stood there like the long, you know, the long the lost, hopeless boyfriend, as you do. And you stood there a bit like, uh, looking around for people to talk to. This lovely woman caught my eye. Her name's Margie. Someone I didn't expect to be speaking to on the day, on the event even. Um, but she absolutely made me night and someone else did as well. For the, for the simple reason is, she just said, I listen to the podcast and I think the three of you are great. Was it Abby's auntie? It was. Yeah. It was. And as she said, obviously, which is understandable, Abby come on the podcast and obviously as a good family relative, she supported it, listened to the podcast to it. and got to know us today a little bit more and decided, I don't know why, but decided to continue listening because she said she thinks we're all right. That's nice, isn't it? So it was nice. I think, I think it's nice, like we've said, when people who aren't, are like, uh, use this inverted commas, target audience, if there's even a thing, because there is no such thing really for us. But like people that we would probably expect to listen to it would be like, brides looking to get married or whatever or you know people who've been married and or people who've used us or people who are considering us Grooms, or, getting married. or just kind of like yeah the whole the whole shebang 
But no. she, was she getting married? Did you say? So funny enough, obviously she was. I'm, I'm not going to guess her age, but she was obviously over at an age where I probably maybe maybe thought she was already married. She's older than me. I think she's been with a partner for 18 years. So that, mm. that that's in itself, which was you know. And she's not married. And, th- and yeah, she just basically she said. She's still got time then, haven't you? Well, she is. She said she's planning. <laughs> she's planning, which I said was I said that's class that because. You know, we've done it over the past few years where people have been together for, you know, a long period of time and just haven't got a chance to get around, to get married. They've been engaged for years. It's just one of those things to put on the back burner and then something one day might just trigger them to go, do you know what? Let's let's stop waiting around. Let's actually get married. Um, Did she say that we were going to film it? Oh. oh. It, you <laughs> do you know, know what? We, we should have plugged ourselves a bit there, shouldn't we? But I'm sure... If she likes us in this realm, she'll like us in that realm. I'd say me ego got ahead of myself because when she come, when she obviously called me over, I was just like I was fangirling over here. The fact Rabbit that she, in the headlights, <laughs> basically, yeah. I thought if someone went to me, oh, I listen to your podcast, I'd just go to bits. But it was the opposite. I was like, oh my god, I love you so much. Um, it was nice, like give it a big hug, and then after I got my charm, I was like, all oh, made over charm. He was like, come on, come over here, come and meet Margie, come and meet Margie. And I did say I was going to give her a shout out because yeah, and there you go, Margie she made girl. me night. But also, she wasn't the only one who made me night. There was a few, which was obviously we had Beth there. We were going to get on the po- podcast as well. We haven't even mentioned there. Um, she's definitely coming on. And two Beths, two Beths. But I think hair by Beth, hair by Bethan. Yes, I'm Beth. She, I think she's going to be our next guest. I'm not like exclusively. No, I think it's uh, well. She was meant to be, wasn't she? Before we had the uh, the other studio pull from in- underneath us, she was meant to be our next guest. Yeah, and then whatever complex of like life has stopped it from happening. But I literally only today said, "When are you coming on this pod?" And, Did she, you? Was like, and she said, "I'm ready to come on. I've got all my questions there and everything." So she's keen. We're coming for you, Beth. Um, she's coming. No, she's coming for us. <laughs> by the sounds of it. Sorry about my cough. I just, since the last podcast, I'm still like coughing me guts up. So it's not COVID. Um, but yeah, just, I'm, it's that time of year, isn't it? Where you're just going around and everyone's got the cough. Um, but I wanted to give someone else a little shout out as well. And it was Debbie. So Debbie was someone who worked with Abby. Again, another person who's obviously supporting Abby through her amazing, amazing new adventure with the events. Um, and again, she come over and introduced herself and said, you know, well done on the podcast. And obviously, I know this section isn't review of the week, but it's nice to hear from people who who don't get in touch, you know, through the socials, but actually come over to us face to face and say, you know, you're doing a good job. Mm-hmm. It makes it all I worthwhile, think for doesn't us, it? It was nice because obviously, most of the time we just assume that it'll be somebody related to the wedding industry or getting married or our family that are listening to the podcast. So to know that people are listening who we wouldn't have expected to even know who we are. It's just really nice, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, I thought that was boss. Celebs for the night. It's just the same girl I said, I said to, she was sitting on a table, or was there somebody else? And she said, oh, we've got famous people in the room there. Is that that girl? Wa- hell. Yeah, I think she was. I think she was. And um, Which, by the way, we're not. And like, I know, we, we I, I, like, I don't know why, I don't even know why I just went along with that. I was like, I yeah. Know, I don't know why I just didn't say, like, and correct myself, but we were like mortified a little bit. We said say, for famous people, but then it was nice because we had that conversation. It was banter, weren't it, initially? Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? It was just, it's nice to have that, like, I know I know we are blowing our own trumpet here. We are, to be five we? minutes. This is about 10 minutes worth of us. I'm just talking, pure like, going. Yeah, we had loads of people coming over to us yeah, saying, yeah, love this. a few autographs and that. Yeah, a few photos. That didn't happen, by the way. Um, there's so many people that I, I want to sort of give a mention to. Laura, we see in here, blast from the past for me and Beth. Yeah, someone. Oh, yeah, Laura, I went to school, but I was seeing her. She's doing like content creating, isn't she? Yeah. For a future. Oh, yeah. Rooms. I followed her off the, off the back of that weekend because she was dead, dead keen to like. What, what are your thoughts? I know we did, and we're going to touch on something else in a minute about <laughs> wedding fairs, what we got up to on the weekend. And you obviously collabed with, you know, this sort of Ish. line of work in a way. Um, when I say collab, I have a conversation with. Yeah. Um, what What's your thoughts on content creators who are coming into the industry, capturing sort of behind the scenes of the wedding day? Not from a film, well, yeah, from a film point of view, but it's like so through a phone, isn't me it? Me and uh, Shout Out Bridal Sky, which is a new, a brand new, only started in September, I think, last Shout year. Shout Out Bridal Sky. Shout Out Bridal Sky. They only started in September, um, off the back of their story, which was the girl of the two, Oh, it sounds really well. I can't remember the names, doesn't it? I'll have to correct that in a minute. Oh, God. Starts off well. well. I just looked at the names. Do you want us to go back to Laura? Talk yeah, about Laura. Right no. after, yeah. <laughs> Hi, Laura. Um, now, 
it happens, you know, sometimes he was getting called Russell on the weekend by another supplier. <laughs> Roland Stop looked like Russell. Um, no names. Um, yeah, seeing Laura, Ian, Abby's dad, Ian, oh my God. If if we had a job for Ian, even though he works and stuff like that, I'd say to him, quit your job and come away with us because he's an absolute legend. Well, I literally was thinking the same thing because I literally can't realize how much of a legend he is and I absolutely love him. But I thought, obviously, we've got future adventures that we all want to achieve and I just think if we need an extra employee, he is the top of the list. Like I, I, think he's, I think he's too above her. You know what I mean? He's just, he's that much of a legend. I think he's, I, I wouldn't, I'd, I'd just think, yeah, go and play golf and enjoy yourself. Um, but I think himself, when he speaks about, you know, when he, he helps Abby out, he loves it, doesn't he? Um, and I think that's what sometimes you feed off when people love the job. And it, for us, you know, when you work with like suppliers and your networking and stuff like that, and you can see they love the job, it makes you go, oh my God, you know, touching on to what we captured yesterday, Everyone in that room loved the job. Uh, this, I feel like I'm doing that. I'm hinting that, like, what we're going to talk about in the next five, ten minutes. But it'll um, be worth the wait. It will be it'll worth. Be worth it'll be worth the wait. Um, have you any, any closer to finding out these no, names? I, just, I literally just mess, messaged them and say, "What's your names?" Because oh I'm, my I'm, god, I know that's really, really bad. This is staying on the podcast. Where I'm not cutting this bit out. If anyone's thinking no, I am, keep, keep it in because it just shows how, how the Real. reality. Yeah, but basically, we had a, a long conversation. Obviously, when you first get in, you go. Oh yeah, you're all right. Oh yeah, you were at the such and so we we didn't really exchange names. Yeah. Um, but obviously I've got to remember two. They've only got to remember one. They might not remember your name. They probably don't. Not after that, Russell. Um, but anyway, back to the the actual like topic, which is how do I feel about content? They were quite surprised actually because I think they, along with all the other content creators out yeah. there, get who, a little hate. Yeah, I, I think they must get hate because they go. They were saying that they go into like forums and stuff like that and read what photographers and creators are saying about them which I wouldn't do because forums and online things are all full of divvies anyway yeah but like they I think what they is is they've got to give an explanation by the way sorry just to interrupt you give an explanation to people who you know are getting married are planning a wedding who might think what are they talking about in terms of content creators so you can give them an idea I'm not, I'm not putting you on the spot here by the way Google you're not because I've just gone on their um Bradle Sky little page there and it says what is a content creator and they've said good question you could see Bradle Sky as a visual storyteller ultimate goal is to document your wedding day from many different viewpoints and utilize the content to create bespoke video packages and photo series you're able to easily share with friends and family now that sounds to me like a do. photographer and videographer but I think the big difference is they don't turn it into well they do kind of but they don't turn it into like an album say like we might turn it into like a physical book or they're not producing stuff that you're going to be hanging on your walls and stuff like that they're typically creating what in inverted commas we call these days content so it's all social media based stuff that they're giving back so like their services for example isn't you know, X amount of hundred images or whatever like that, and like you'll get it next day teas and stuff like this type of stuff we do. Theirs is like you'll get X amount of pieces of content, three of which will be reels for your Instagram, two of which will be TikTok videos, you know, stuff like yeah. that. But their thing, the more so we are, sorry, interrupt. Go on. I, I, I've just got a burning question in the back of my head. Do they replace a photographer and videographer in the day no. or do they work alongside? Well, their, their thing is that they don't want to replace that. They, okay. She says herself, um, we know that we'll never take that spot. Well, she thinks they won't take that spot because we're kind of integral and the equipment we typically use, which I think is maybe what's a little bit different, it is, isn't it, is more expensive and more like premium. I can't even know if you could say that really. Yeah. But at the same time, all we're doing is being content creators except we're just using like pro bodies whereas a lot of our now nowadays content creators are using phones and drones yeah i think that's the difference what do you have an opinion on content creators at all to put you on the spot no i i feel like i don't really know much about them because obviously then, with laura being you know a friend yeah, and stuff i still doing feel it. like it's quite fresh but i feel like it's gonna blow out the water i feel like it is gonna be something big but then my thought is it from a bride and groom point of view obviously is not really understanding the difference is why would you have both so why would you have a photographer videographer if you can get a content creator 
That is what I think brides and grooms may ask. But I was going to say, do you know what I think we should do? Go on. Just get bridal sky on and they'll, they'll answer well, all these I, questions. I said this to them already. Like, they're, they're a boss team, by the way, brother and sister team. I wish I really knew the name. Sounds really, makes me sound dead bad. But they... Um, they were lovely, like yeah. genuine and lovely people. And they, they loved and they had a passion for what they were doing. No different to anybody else who works within the wedding industry. Obviously, you only do what you're doing because you love doing it. And they were no different. But they, their one is like, we're not here to try and take jobs off like the likes of ourselves, for example. Yeah. They're just kind of trying to be like an extra part of the day. Kind of like a photo booth is or, you know, of I don't know, chair dressing or whatever like that. It's just an extra piece. Yeah. Is it kind of um, like... Obviously, when you've got your friends and your family filming the wedding all day on bits and bobs on their phone, they'll it's just put that kinda, together. It's yeah. just kind of like having another relative there, just capturing the day on the phone. Well, that's I think how they've said that they work. They're just another person that are kind of like blending into the background, who are basically coming in all these types of videos together for you, but in a slightly more advanced way. Yeah. But then I said, so what? What's the score between you coming and getting like? content if you like on better equipment and she said well that kind of blares the line and so i think some of them actually feel as though they won't advance any further than phone use or whatever like that's the whole idea but then that's not the case because obviously we've got our mate matty who's usually our producer he creates content he's a content creator isn't he yeah but he just does it on like pro level bodies so i don't know i, I think i think what we said before We'll get them on, definitely, because obviously brides and grooms, I think, is for them. It's something that they might... They'd have to explain it better than we will. Yeah. But the way I seen it, or the way I said it was, it's just a natural evolution of the world and technology. And predominantly, like, even even us, even when I talk to brides about, like, what they get from a... From a I don't like to say the word package. I actually hate the word package, by the way. I've noticed this loads lately. Why? I just hate it. I just think it's a, just a dead, overused word. In other words, you see a lot of our photo friends using investments now rather than packages. I, I actually spoke about this the other day with another photographer saying about an investment. I, oh, sorry, and it was a couple as well at the wedding fair that we're going to discuss shortly on the podcast. Um, the word investment for me is, is important to relate it to packages, I think, because... The package is an investment. It's a lot of money. What we obviously, you know, charge. When I say, you know, what we charge, I think the whole photography, videography side of things, it can be to someone who's foreign to planning a wedding or someone who doesn't understand it, they would assume that it's only a couple of hundred quid, I think, to have a photographer and videographer. Obviously, you might disagree, but the people who are planning the wedding and they come along and they go, oh my God, I did not know it was going to be that. That's the reason why I think people call it an investment because it's something that you're going to keep and cherish forever. Yeah. We touched on it last year called the podcast before when we were saying about things die, <clears throat> things get eaten, but your photos and video were the last thing that you're going to have to hold. That's why it's an investment. That's why you should pay that bit, a little bit extra to have something that's going to be, you know. Yeah, don't keep. skimp out on that party Wednesday. Honestly. But I, it, literally, it's not even the what you're calling it. I just hate the word package. I just f feel like it kind of cheapens it a little bit by saying package. I actually went on my website this weekend and changed everything that said package to option. Seriously? Yeah, swear down. I think it's just, that's just a me thing. I eat it. But I find, it's a tough one really because I remember when we were, we're, we were, sk were skidding through this by the way, aren't we? We were like jumping loads. Why? Not in a bad way, but I mean, like... Well, I think it's good, because some brides and grooms who are planning weddings who, li who listen to the podcast might be like, when we go on people's websites, we don't understand what investment we... In sorry, investment means, what packages means, what option means. So I think it's good that you're all touching on saying, well, I like to call it this. So when you are inquiring, it's more just, I'd say, packages, like... <laughs> you would. Um, <coughs> I'm just talking about something. Have we got anything else to add about Abby's event on Abby's Friday. Event. Other than the fact that it was unbelievable and yeah. we had an amazing time along with everybody else and we all, if you haven't seen the stories, go over to her events page. Abby Oliver Events, is that I the... I think it's Abigail. Abigail. Oliv is it Olivia or Oliver? Oliver. Oh, oh I don't know. <laughs> Shit with names. <laughs> Honestly, they're all our mates, swear to God. No, it's more funny. Is that we're great with, with the couple's names? We yeah. don't forget that. Abigail Oliver Events is her actual page. But we basically, the next day, 
I don't know about you, but I just looked at that like mounds and mounds of stories that were getting shared. I don't think anyone had a bad time, and she's already mentioned about having it like an annual mixer thing, which I'm 100 percent in for. Uh, we commented on her story. I'm definitely, definitely up for that. Sorry to just interrupt no? you there. It's fine. Uh, and if any anybody else who is looking for an events planner in any event that you want to do or have got plans, you need to get in touch with her because she's your gal. Yeah, she's on it. Took she? the words out of my mouth. I was gonna use that. I was gonna use that. She's your gal. So obviously. I felt really bad there because I didn't remember their names because my mind just went blank because I'm in like mid flow. But I've just been messaging our mates at Bridal Sky there. Whoop whoop. And Jason and Nicola were the, the lad and the girl. They're basically a brother and sister team. Shout out Jason and Nicola. Bridal Sky, content creators extraordinary. We're going to try and get you on. By they, the are, way. they are on. They're on. You're I've, I've already, you're already on. <laughs> Touching on to West Tower's wedding fair. We did yeah. that on the weekend, didn't we? Yeah, Joint. so we had First the one. privilege to do it Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. And obviously you couldn't tell us where you detailed mm. to on Sunday in a little while, but... Do you want to talk about Saturday's one? Saturday's one? Mm. We were all there on Saturday. It was an absolute... I, I can't explain... You know, Out of body experience. <laughs> I think for us, we've always wanted to be a part of, like, West Tower. And I know we had the West Tower podcast and all that type of stuff, and we we rave on about them. It's genuinely because we absolutely love being there. Um, and when we we had the chance to be, you know, I recommend the supplier be on their fairs. It was a massive, it was a massive feeling. So it was an, a, a massive milestone in our little journey. I, I felt different when I walked in there that day. Did you? Did you feel any? Because I you know, obviously you go in there all the time to do people's weddings and stuff, which is great. But like when I walked in that day. I, f- I, there was like a f- an aura within me that I felt different. Like I almost felt like I was rubbing shoulders with some of these people who I've never <laughs> met before. No, it was honestly, but like obviously you've got like people who've been there forever, like the Strudes, Andy J. Uh, we see him, what's his name? Gav Alexander was there, even yes. though he wasn't presenting on that particular day. Uh, the Lenovo Cakes. There, there was just loads of people, Thornton events, shout outs everywhere. Do you Nicole know I mean? Photography, she Nicole was there. Nicole Photography, well. Keel Photography. Um, violin around there was loads but people were just like big in this space and I thought like what the hell get on me mingling with these like big hitters who have been around for like 40 years or whatever yeah putting year. put year years in there a bit I like yeah. I know or maybe not 40 years but I mean they've been around a long yeah, time have, and yeah. I, I've said to all of them individually like I've followed you from afar for such a long time and here I am standing next to you it was, it was, night, it was a feeling of like self worth and accomplishment which you don't always give yourself the, the, the pass on the back sometimes I think what was nice when we walked in was the fact that I didn't feel like they were looking at us in a way that like, oh, who are these coming in now to sort of step on our toes or anything like that. Every single every single supplier in there was really, really supportive towards mm. us. Oh, yeah, I'm lovely. not saying that fairs aren't like that, but it's business isn't it, at the end of the day and people can feel a little bit, you know, oh, who's this photographer coming in? Who's what was the three photographers, four photographers? In one, in one space, in yeah. one In one space, no bigger than like across the room from each other. So you're all looking at like talking to the yeah. prospective clients and stuff like that. The good thing is that like most good wedding fairs have, they might have a few different vendors in who do the same thing, but there'll be unique differences between them all. And I feel like that was kind of us on that day. You can see there was a, a difference between each of us that were in there, yourselves included. Oh. But West Tower is just such an amazing venue, isn't it? Yeah. Like, any brides and grooms looking to get married, like, they need to go and look at West Tower because... Are we sponsored by them? Elite. <laughs> honest, to God, honest to God, the, we need to start asking... Can we say the names? Can we start asking Steph for some serious yeah. dough here? Because we plug them to... I, I reckon at the bottom of the arch, yes, we're going to do like a little 30, second, sec, 30 <laughs> seconds of... Sponsored by West Tower, blah, blah. No, yeah. it's... Do you know what? It's, I, just, um, I just feel like, at the moment, a lot of what we've been doing in our prospective businesses has been heavily geared around them because we've just spent so much time there lately yeah. and that, that might be you know ju- it's just because we're always there at the moment we're just talking about it because that seems to be where we are yeah. but if we were at like I don't know any other venue name is a venue Hoxton Hall yeah. if we were at Hoxton Hall every uh, other week which we're like at theirs we'd probably be talking about them all the time because that's where our weddings of the week were or whatever I think as well with West Tower the staff we've built up this massive rapport now we're all you know we love the staff yeah. And I think that I for us, and obviously we love the venue, love the ground, stuff like that. But the staff are the ones that you work with, work alongside yeah. on the day, lots. And it just feels like, I don't know. 
You feel a past the team. Do, I do think. you know what was nice talking about being past of the team? And hopefully this doesn't like get anyone in like in bits or in trouble behind the scenes. But when they asked us if we wanted to go on their Christmas night out with them, I don't think that'll get us in trouble. No, I, I, I was nice. Just, it was lovely, but I was thinking, no, are we like, have they asked 45 people before they've come to us? Or like, <laughs> do they feel that we're on we're that level ones. now? We're like, we are that much part of the team. I think I mean? for us, we go out our way a lot of the time with most venues. Well, every venue that we work at, we always go out our way to build a rapport up with the staff. We want, we want, to, we want them to remember it us. It to be fluid, doesn't it? Yeah, we want, us, we want them to remember us in a way that we'd go, oh, they were lovely then. I wouldn't mind working with them again. That's what I always want to try and give off. And I think at West Tower, because we have, we have, we've had the chance to be there a lot through the weddings, the staff obviously feel that about us. They probably think, oh, they're all right then. I wouldn't mind, you know, mm. if they if, if we've got space on yeah. our Christmas night out. They don't play up to us at all, do they? They're just themselves around us. 100%. Which is, uh, like shining lights I goes touching on the fair though um, I'd love just to say thanks to everyone who come over said hello um, I know fairs can be a little bit awkward and I've always said I hate the idea of fairs in terms of selling ourselves I know we touched on it on, last, on, last, on the last episode but I just say thanks to everyone who come over said hello um, people who did book as well that's great um, and yeah all the suppliers Gav shout out we were, we were still next to him took over your space on the Sunday. Um, but it, again, shout out to Gavin in that sense because he's another person I think we need to get in the in the hot seat in here because he, I think he has got such a, you know, um, wide, massive experience in our industry and he's got so many good points to talk on, I think. Hey, he's, got, he's got such a great personality as well. Like I just feel like every time you see him, you just like smile because he's just so lovely. Isn't yeah, he? I think, you know what, you've just touched it, touched it on the head and his wife as well. She's, she's great as well. Um, I, I, um, we haven't had as many chances to, you know, meet her because she works in a different line of work in the industry still. Um, but at the fair, I got a chance to meet her, and she's just as, you know, boss as him. So get her on as well if you want to. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, uh, just before we move on after the fairs, is there anything you want to add about the fairs? Fairs, say fairs more. Fairs, fairs. I just like to say that I'm looking forward to our next wedding fair because I just love meeting people face to face. Just. You were on fire, to be fair. Oh, so nice. Beth was she, doing all the bits, wasn't she? She was on fire. You were just like a little apprentice, weren't you? See, I, wasn't was done... even, like, I wasn't even trying to sell ourselves. I was literally just talking to people. That's what she did the best. I think she weren't selling. She weren't selling us. She was just being a really relatable person and making people feel comfortable when they did, did approach the table. Mm. Instead of, with me, I'm one of them where I can feel a, a bit imposter syndrome when I'm stood there being like... I feel a bit salesy. It, it automatically feels salesy because your work is next to you. Yeah. And you're stood there like, you feel like a, you know, a TV salesman at times as well, like you're trying to sell a telly. QVC. Yeah. yeah. Even though, you know, you're selling what's on the telly. Um, yeah, I just hate it. I and think I th- it's so funny because you see people in the like, Yeah, doing all that. <laughs> I know, I'm walking I, past the table. I, I, I make a big oh, point of saying like, you know, you can't come over or like, I just leave them to go and then I'll try and like break the ice by like, say for example, if they're looking at something there, I'll kind of like go around the back of the store or around from the, the sides because typically I'm usually the other side or whatever and just like go in the least creepiest way that I've just come to approach you then if you need to ask me anything, I'm here. Do you know what I mean? Just to kind of like make it seem a bit funny because it, I eat it. I ate that, that feel of that you're trying to sell your self slash product. Yeah. Um, but I try and opt for like what Beth's done which is just talk to them as a person and if they want to ask you any questions they will yeah because I think some people do have like a pitch don't they and they have like a, a breakdown of how they're going to approach a couple or whoever who stands at their table what they're going to say where I think every different person I think person. we should do a little poll about this go on I think we should put a poll on our socials right now while we're on the podcast basically saying who thinks wedding fairs is something that they enjoy going to or do they prefer booking things on online because on you know what it's like now the world is all online and i think a lot of people just find it's so much more yeah know. definitely a lot of people are like con- like would prefer communication via email than face to face because like social anxiety or whatever yeah like because it is 2024 nearly said 2023 then uh, i've got something to say on that though so about the online thing which i get because it's more convenient it's less like What's the word? What is the word? I don't know what the word is, but it's like... Grease is the word. You, you don't have that feeling of like like pressure, whatever. You can just look at your own time, which is fine. 
But at the same time, I encourage people to go to wedding fairs because you get the truest version of the person that you're potentially going to be booking. Is what yeah. I always say to everyone. And like, yeah. even people who come to my little store and I talk to them and I, I'll still say, whoever you end up booking, if it's not me, whoever it might be for, for anything, just try and meet them first or see them in a real life scenario, even if you go to a, another wedding that they're at. Because... Yeah. You heard so many other stories of like they've booked it based on what they've seen, but then when they've turned up and they've been present, it's not what they thought they were getting. Uh, and I just think you wouldn't want to deal with it at that point. You'd rather deal with it at this point before you've even started. Wise words from the man himself. There you go. Go to your wedding fairs if you get a chance to. Go to your wedding fairs and talk to, to your vendors. Because you are right in that sense, to be fair, because, you know, the last thing you want to do is book someone, regret it, and think... We actually met a lovely fella at that fair, and because we already had one booked, sometimes that does happen. Now I'm not trying to drop our. Um, oh, happened the other day, didn't it? That's what I mean. It does happen where you go to the fairs. Sorry to those other photo and video people who got cancelled you, because they wanted us. Sorry about that. <laughs> you just you just meet people and you connect with them and you think you know what you're for me, and I think that's what fairs can sometimes does. And it might happen to us. They might go to a fair and meet someone else and think you're for me rather than us. Hopefully it doesn't happen, but you know it might do. Yeah, it might do. Um, we're with, done. We're done with the face. I was going to say that I was somewhere else on Sunday. Where was yours? Oh, Alec like Gladstone, wasn't it? Fire away. I won't keep. I won't keep it as long as that because we've talked about where fairs as a general thing, which I think covers everything. But yeah, just as well as West Tower on Saturday, I was at the Alec Gladstone wedding fair on the Sunday, which is where Shout I met our friends. Shout out Alec Gladstone. Alec Gladstone. Alec Gladstone. Whatever you want to call it. We do go to other venues. Do you know what I mean? How it does seem. This podcast is very like West it. Tower heavy. Yeah. Um, and as much as I love them, and I really, really do, we tr- are trying to remain impartial. Sorry, well, sorry Steph. <laughs> speaking about wedding fairs, we'll just, I'll round this up with one more wedding fair thing. We, Men Rocks Films, will be at Formby Hall. Plug. This Wednesday. Tomorrow, oh, actually, tomorrow. I'm, I'm advertising this Wednesday, but this podcast is going to go af- out <laughs> after <laughs> the wedding fair. Come and so. see us last week. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Give them that, scrap that. No, I think it's good. I think it's good to let people know that we are, you know, other venues have asked us to be on their fairs. Like, for us, you know, it's not every day where someone at a venue comes along and goes, we'd love you to come and showcase your work at us. Um, and thankfully, thanks to Gav as well, having a, a good relationship with Formby Hall, we've somehow got our way in. Um, didn't ask, which is nice. It's just nice to be asked because they like us as a, you know, as a two and they like, what we represent. Review of the week, that quickly. Yeah. Yeah, that I live on. Ready, this one is from Liz and Paul from West Tower. Um, <laughs> and their review is, oh my God, Josh and Beth, wow, what can I say? You just made me cry. Even Paul was tearing up, although he won't admit that. Ha <laughs> ha. Yep. I kept all them tears in on the day, but you got me with that video. I saw watching that. You picked up everything that we wanted to see. My dad's first look, the interactions with all the family. You even picked up I had my nan's ruby ring on, which I didn't even mention to you, but you just knew that must have meant being special to me and picked it up on the video. That video is everything and more and something we are going to watch every single year on our wedding anniversary. Hands down, the best decision we ever made picking you to video our day. Thank you so much. Me and Paul are so grateful. Keep being amazing at what you do. So down to earth and so talented. Thank you so much again. Wow. That is so lovely that. You know what bit, obviously all of it was lovely, but particularly i love the way we just said so down to earth because like we're, we're just normal people we're yeah. just normal people and this is our job and like that's all we are and we're I, just so grateful that this is our job i always think that people think we're gonna turn up and be like pure camera divas where we're like out the way i've got i'm the camera guy you know here i am it, it's funny because i think that's typically what people may expect in that way i think what I try, what I seem to find myself doing more than anything else at, at wedding fairs or when I'm ever having consultations with people is trying to change people's ideas of what a wedding photographer slash videographer team look like and how they approach the day, how they're present on the day. All I find myself doing is trying to like get into people's heads is we're not them. We're not these like <laughs> archaic people who've been there and feel like every size fits everyone. It's not us. We just come in, blend be your mates, and then you get some boss photos and videos at the end of it. Can I have that in writing? Yeah, I'll put it down. We'll transcribe it. Um, See that table, transcribing. Okay. Yeah, transcribing, might even find us in a weird form soon. If you've got time. Apparently so. it's a good way to get them out there. I was doing research, wasn't I? Oh. 
Is this another history lesson? Because I feel like no. it sounds like it's another history no, lesson. No, not history lesson this one, not science either. This is just pure out and out research of how to get this podcast further out there and transcribe it, transcribing uh, videos into blog form and sending out was one way to do it. Okay. Or another way to do it is to also ask the people who are currently listening slash your viewers to share it every time we share it. So if you could do that, that'd be great. That would be, do you know what? Be nice that, wouldn't it? Yeah, it would. Yeah. Because we'd know that. that. We'd know then as well. I think what I might put out there, if you are listening to this and you have got the time after listening to it, Send us a little message. Yeah, just tell saying. us what you think. Listen to that one. Do you know, at the end of every single podcast, especially on Spotify, there is always at the end, what did you think about this? Which is, some people have commented on, on, on the YouTube side of things, but not many on the Spotify side of things, which I think is the most interacted part. That is we, it? That we have, yeah, at the moment, yeah. Um, every single, after every single show, they can leave a review of what they thought, what they thought the best bit was. And it gives us an idea of where we're going wrong, where we're going right, so we can mould it around them going forward. Yeah. You know that in writing as well? He's hey, just on fire, what, this fella. What, what was in that cup of tea, Beth? <laughs> Petrol. Yeah, anyway. Back to your review. I feel like I've come back now because I was a bit skittish before, wasn't I? I felt like I lost myself. Yeah. It's because I was sweating. Um, so yeah, got a review here. Got one off. Got one off, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well done. Uh, Chat GBT. It wasn't Chat <laughs> Real review. You can check it out on my page if you want. Uh, hi, Ryan. Sorry for the longer way to reply. Let it off. <laughs> Firstly, can I just say our wedding photos are simply stunning. We didn't even realize you were there half of the time as we were going through the photos. Me and Chris, me and Chris, little breadcrumb there, even said, How did he capture this? Even the photo you got of me granddad on my wedding bouquet next to my sister's screensaver on her phone of him. These little details are so special and wow, you captured all of the beautiful moments and even got some of the best shots of Olivia. Who you know is a toddler that just wants to run wild. I know what the feeling's like. Uh, we've all got toddlers, haven't we? Mm -hmm. uh, from the first meeting on Zoom, we had spoken to you. We knew that you understood what we were looking for and all of our families agreed how perfectly you fit into the day. It wasn't awkward and we felt at ease and relaxed the whole way through. Thank you so 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 much for being our wedding photographer, and can we? And we can't wait to get some of the photos done to share them with all of our families too. You did not miss a beat. We'll cherish these photos forever. Thank you so much from the Andersons. Remember them? Whoop whoop whoop. Yeah, I do remember them. Chris and Han. How could I forget? Lovely bunch. You know what I think just shows how creative we are is like both of those reviews obviously the ring was mentioned and then also the, the little details it? next to the phone it's the little details that like we don't know who those people are we don't know the meaning behind things but yet still but we can appreciate them capture them and that's what we do i think we look for them as i touched on earlier on the podcast we look for them little details where i think that's all i do <laughs> we know they're going to be cherished we know they're going to be precious and we know that when you see them it's just going to bring a, a certain level of emotion that you're going to be like wow I can't believe you yeah. got that it's a certain level of emotion that we couldn't we couldn't make up no we, we can't I, the way I always say to people is where our photos and our films are a reflection of you and your day not obviously we're trying our best to put it together in a way that looks aesthetically pleasing and whatever but your day is a reflection of what you have in it and the people that you have in it and the the, the details and all of the stuff that is just all you so yeah. um, that's all we're doing we're just bringing that to the front amazing so it's that time of the week which is we need to actually press a button I think moving forward so a little intro so one of them buttons is applause down there. So you're the press and stop. Press them buttons. I reckon you just press the buttons. Yeah, yeah. So the, yeah, yeah, the coloured buttons. Oh, that's a little bit tweeting. Okay. So you'd have to press it again to turn it off. Come on. But I think it's the... Oh, a little jingle. <gasps> yeah. Topic Quit. time. Is are we doing topic time? Or we... It's question time. What's topic time? We've literally missed topic of the week, haven't we? Yeah. <laughs> it's asked. What was topic of the week? Drinks reception. Oh my anyway. god, we had we had so much to talk about the topic of the week. Let's just leave that for the next pod. I we'll think. leave that for the next topic. Yeah. But one of them is like a you can preset them as well. So by the way, people are like, uh, what, the what hell are they? Is what that? are they talking about? Can you press another one? So we have we have this little. What's I'll it, press, what an, is it I'll press another one. Creepy music. Can you say that? I can only hear it through your headphones. 
Does it sound like that? No. Give me one more take. Drunch. I think the top left one is the one that's like. Oh, I've done that one, sorry. We're learning. Yeah. So learn, Kev, guys. Yeah, yeah. You've got to turn them off. I'm as well. actually controlling this with me toe. <laughs> We're at. So. Multi talented, I bet. I'm pressing it with big toe and then my little toe's turning a different one. Right, I think I've got it. I've got it. Okay, are we ready? Yeah. What are we going to do? So, do you want me to do the jingle for question time? Say question time. I'll just, I'll do the jingle. All right. Ready? Do you, want you, do, you want, do you want me to do the question? Do you want to read them off? But I think we should mention what we've just been doing there because we've got this little machine that <coughs> controls our podcast sounds, basically. Yeah. And you can preset these things, but they already come with a lot of presets on and the, you press little buttons and little tones come out, which is what you've just been hearing there. You don't need to know that because it's technical, but in case you thought, what are they talking about? That's what. Does sound good? Yeah. Little jingle. Well... Here yeah, at the end, of the, <laughs> at the end of the thing. Comments if you like our jingles. Comments and subscribe. <laughs> press that bell. Remember that I said that one time, didn't I? Anyway, yeah. this is like multitasking and it's fantasy, and I'm moving my fingers now. My toes involved. So, question time. Well done, Beth. I can't wait to hear that back. <laughs> That is a clip in itself. I can't believe how happy she looks as well. She's mastered it. Love that, you know. Want to do it again? Right, we'll we'll make one properly for She's that. She's not doing it again. Not a letter. No, we're going to do it I again. Know, I know, I know. It's where we get put on the spot and we don't have no real answers. Go on. Okay, so. Set. Camera on you. Yeah. Camera is going to be on Go me. On. Right. Sit back, relax, and enjoy question time. This isn't really a question. This is just more of a compliment, but it says oh. it's from... <laughs> The one and only Mr. Ian Hanlon, oh, Abby's dad. Talking about him before. Big ups. It's like he must have knew we were speaking about him and he just sent a question. <laughs> and he's commented on saying, how did you all scrub up so well? It was great chatting to you all. So obviously he's referring to Friday because we put a Friday picture up. Yeah. So we have obviously commented on him throughout the podcast. But Is that what he sent in, yeah? That's what he sent in. He's just sent Minus Ryan, away. did he say on the scrubbing up bit or...? <laughs> I'm joking. Why would you do that? I'm joking. I spent the best part of two hours putting that rig out together. Rig out? I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that. Like, I'm scouting around, like, lads. Rig out. Rig, rig out. Imagine saying up, it's like seeing the green in the morning, being like, belt a rig out, that, lads. Sick that rig out, lad. Bougie, that. Bougie. <laughs> do you know what? Touching on it, our ab <laughs> said the word bougie. bougie in I know. The, the three of us went and to bed. The three of us all just went. Oh my God. But she the just, funniest, she do doesn't know. Do you know what the funniest part about it is? Obviously, she, like, she must have been looking at us thinking, why have you just reacted that way to what I've just said? But she hadn't heard the podcast or that we'd recorded yeah. that day before or wherever it was. And we were thinking, oh, it's that she had. So. I think it was just a, an inside joke at the time. Because um, we're not down with the kids, basically. But it's been out now, hasn't it? It was on the little um, showreel and the yeah. highlights. Show but it was, it was one of them, we're, we're not down with the kids, up. it's not like, you know, we're laughing at you. We can't just... say that in a sentence and be taken serious. I can't anyway. What? Bougie. Bougie. Okay, next question. Yes, so please. That was just a little compliment. But oh, this, yes. Thanks, uh, This is an actual question. Cool guy. From our bougie gal, Mimi Bellavance. Oh, I so, there we go. Ooh, Put your seatbelt on. I so actually think, sorry, can I just say, I actually, there's a part of me that thinks... She was at the thing, we didn't even mention her. Part of me And social that, boots girl, she was there too. Oh my God. <laughs> this, this whole episode should have just been called the f- review of Abby's events because there was so much to talk about. I know, we have loads out, but... But in terms of we love our all. friend who runs the show, maybe me, me, Bella Vent. What did she say? She sends questions in all the time. She's, she's, she's the best hysterical. The questions. And there's a part of me that thinks, does she even listen to the podcast? She, she sends random yeah, questions. Yeah. It catches out, yeah. But she's coming on at one point, so we'll ask her. She will come on. Right, so she has asked, what is the most disastrous thing you have seen at a wedding? She's constantly looking. Yeah, she's looking to get us out. She's lo- thing, catching us she? out. I said, this is at the event I said, with the podcast, we are, you know, for us, we know a lot of our previous brides and grooms, listen, we're not bitches to start with, and that's a bit harsh of me to say, but we're not. Um, and because uh, I know the industry can be can fall into that trap where you're like, oh my God, last week, Jangles. this happened, blah, blah, blah. For us, we're just like, do you know what? Life's too short to be, what? yeah, like, it's a little bit boring, isn't it? To be like... But, but what is the most disastrous know, thing? Yeah. <laughs> Spill the goss. Um, what is the most? I'd say I. Th- I think I've got one for you to tell. Go on. Oh God. I think you should tell everyone about your famous tea story, but it's short on it. That was quite disastrous. Tea. Cup of tea. Cup of tea. 
cup of tea. Oh, I'll just tell her. Cup of the tea. disaster of thing when the flower girl, everyone was getting oh ready God. in the browser prep, and the flower girl, luckily it was a cold cup of tea, picked up the cold cup of tea, and it went all down her lovely white dress. Now, that is disastrous to me. She had to walk down the aisle, obviously, with the tea stained dress, but she was cute, so she got away with it. Yeah, I, I remember when that happened, and I always remember thinking, if I ever did a podcast, I'm going to talk about that. You've just put me on the spot, and I didn't remember the story. Anyway. But at the time... <laughs> I give you the short version anyway. No, yeah. yeah probably done yeah, us a favour. You've done, done us a favour. Done, done, done everyone who's <laughs> listening a favour. Yeah, you can imagine. Like, just relate to that. Just try and put yourself in the bride and groom shoes, thinking... She, what, she was you literally know, about to walk down the aisle. He's on a replacement bridesmaid dresses, the flower girl or flower girls, or whatever. He's on a replacement of anything. Typically, oh, so it was so sad. And do you know what? Hats off to Lydia the bride because she was an absolute legend. The way she took it, she just went. Do you know what? It is what it is, and I'm just glad it was a cold one. Which always brought me onto the debate, and I've always said it for years. Should tea and coffee be allowed in the bridal suite? You've been waiting to get that in. We'll put that to he's a wait. poll. That's another poll. He's been waiting to get that in since, since a month slash two months before we even started this. Well, do you know what? And there you go. I've got it. Ryan, any disastrous things? Uh, I wouldn't say... He's got his own rings at his own wedding. Just getting it out there before he did. Well, I was going to say that. But I was going to say more about scenarios, which could be a disaster rather than like actual disasters. Because I don't want to be like... Because disaster is a big word, isn't it? Let's be honest. Disasters, I think, like, I think what? some of the disastrous things have happened, which... These glasses are a disaster on my face. Oh, that's a bit harsh of myself oh, there. Why is it nice yourself? I know, like. thanks, class. So, I have seen disasters happen, or, or near happen, loads of times, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> on the roads, yeah, in life, weddings, in yeah, life, it, what it, are you on about? Like, but I think some of the disasters, which probably people... Candles. Candles, damn candle things getting smashed all over the place. You know, the ones that go down the aisle. Floating candles. Floating candles. They're getting smashed every like, Friday. They do you look good though, don't they? They look great, but there is a disaster waiting to happen. Um, burn your dress on them, burn the veils on them. Seeing that, that happens happen. loads. Um, bride getting too drunk before she's even got down to the ceremony. Seeing that. Um, Name dad, names. Dad of the bride being off his cake. Seeing that. That is not getting put in the podcast. It is. Why not? I didn't say who's. <laughs> I'm um, not putting that in. I've got the power. Groom being you got late. The power of that's, me. that's a disaster, isn't it? What is? Groom being late. Groom forgetting the rings. Not you. That's a disaster. Um things not turning up, people not turning up, like a supply book on us or thinking that you've booked a supplier and then not turning up to your wedding. One that springs to mind just before Christmas, uh, they booked a certain male single, let's just say that, to turn up to their wedding. It's not getting put in, there's but no a chance. Male a male vocalist repeat it again yeah. didn't turn up to the wedding thinking that they were booked for it and then they couldn't get in touch with him the entire night and it turns out that he kind of double booked himself um, uh, and then I didn't know, yeah, actually come now. to the thing but the, what, what I said and the way I kind of chilled the bride out at the time is that nobody i.e. your guests who's coming to your wedding know yeah. what to expect they don't know what that day looks like unless you went out there and told everyone which typically they don't yeah. they don't know what singer's turning up what dress you're going to wear what songs you're going to be getting walking down the aisle to so she was dead in her head about it but I just said you can't get upset about something that nobody else knows that's happening yeah. as far as you're concerned that yeah. was a disaster for me though because she was dead upset which was, was that's nice. what sort of is the part where I think it's disastrous when the bride and groom are, are really unhappy or sad about something. Yeah. That's when... That's a disaster for me. That's a disaster for me. And, and obviously it's not because we've made them sad or something ha- it's something that's happened that, or something, a knock-on effect. But I can vouch for all three of us here. I know what we're like. We lift the energy straight away. Not in an annoying way either. Try to. Not in an annoying way because we understand like once they're in that headspace, it's only the people that really know them that can... <laughs> oh what? We didn't even say it, what? but we can't say it because it's just that like bang on. But I could just say it now and if I know, you want to cut it out, I know, we can. I know you mean. So I... disaster! You booked a wedding in the slickest, loveliest venue abroad, right? Two hundred guests, two hundred guests fly over there. No expense spared. The place is like something out of a storybook. Storybook. You get movie. there, movie, whatever. You get there, you build it all up, and then it rains on a day. That's a disaster. And it was all outside. And it was all outside. And all of the play settings were all ring and wet. But they were the best group of people. They were the best. The, I was only talking about this the other day to our mates at Bradle Sky. Shout out to them again. About how good of a show of humanity it was when 
people just ignored the rain and like danced in the rain. Yeah. That was the be- the best part of the day for me. Third and final question. Oh, we got another question. Third and final question. I thought we only had two. Yep. Lucky us. Is groom prep essential? To be filmed or in general? Because <sighs> be obviously it's I think there's two ways you look at this. Okay, let me ask you something because I think for this podcast, Go it's on. always good the fact that you're a groom. Not anymore. Uh, well, you've been married. I'm a husband now. And you got your groom prepped, filmed, and captured. Yeah, they did. To a, a, an extent. Um, what do you think? Are you, ch- are you asking ChatGBT how to answer this question? No, I was going to see if we had any uh, answers back to our poll that we put out earlier. We haven't. Um, lovely. Lovely, yeah. Good, good, good for sharing. We'll share it in the next one. So. I think the way I say it to people is it's not essential preference. It's a preference. But if you can get it done, I would always, because the, the way we try and, or the way I try and like box it up for someone is if it's possible, if you're getting ready, say for example, I've got a wedding book and, and the bride's getting ready at one place and the groom slash bride's getting ready at another place. If those two places are quite close together, I will try my best to get between the both because I always think the more of a story you can tell of that day from every possible angle and facet, especially bride and groom or bride and bride and groom or groom, whatever, um, the better. Yeah. So it's not essential. We won't force that on you. But if you want it or if you're thinking about should I have it or not, I would always say definitely get it if you can, if it's feasible to do so. Before I put Beth on the spot... I think majority of the time, and I hear it all the time from a bride's perspective when it's a, obviously, you know, a bride and groom wedding, they always say, oh, he, he doesn't want to get filmed or he doesn't yeah. want to get captured, but I'm going to make him anyway. And I always think that's quite funny in a sense because in my head I'm thinking, do you sort of see where we're coming from, why we want to capture it? And maybe the, the lads are just being a little bit... Laddie. Basically, yeah. You know what I mean? That tough guys. You know, I don't want to get filmed. I don't want to get caught. All that stuff. Do you know what it's When they meet us, though, they're like, oh, yeah, use a sound. Yeah. I don't I mind. Think, being I mean, here. literally just want to say that. I think what's good for us is when we can get into that opportunity of, say, it's like a, a venue where it's all under one roof, so everyone's getting ready in one room or another. Perfect for us. Or if it's not, and there's somewhere else. But what I mean, and what you were just touching on there, is that when we turn up to, like, the lads, if you like. The they're, lads. They're getting ready. Or the other bride, you know, it's 2024. Um, we just seamlessly slip into that world. I try to think. Like, like, love. like we don't, we just mirror them, don't we? If the lads are all in there being like boisterous lads and we're going, oh, talking about the fussy in that. We'll just go, sounds talking about the fussy in that. And yeah. we'll just blend. And then slowly we'll kind of get You can on. see Ryan can't be one of the lads. I am one of the lads. Most laddest lad you've ever met, and the most laddest lad you can come but across. But also the most gayest lad you've ever met, and that's where me, me passion and strength lies. That's where your little clip from the week come from. Me and Miguel. Gail, I know what you want on your wedding morning, and I know he doesn't want me there. But I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> my mates, do you know my mates clipped loads of these things off and the back of this? Cliff. And that's another clip for them. So nice one. Shouts out the leads. The leads. Um, Beth, here's a question for you. Um, if it comes to our wedding. Um, oh, oh, touch subject. When? This is a running joke, and it's going to happen f- until the day it happens. Do you notice I didn't say anything in that time? Because yeah. I really appreciate that. Just letting you off, Josh. I've got anxiety when we record these podcasts. Um, do you think you would like to see what I was up to in the morning? Because sometimes it's about perspective. So the other person, would you like to see me? Yeah, I think I would like to see you. Um, I think it's different because obviously there's a lot more. I was involved in a bridal prep where you're getting your hair and makeup done and it's not usually the case for a boy. It's not unusual to get me hair and makeup done in the morning. 2024. Exactly. But no, I think I would like to obviously see you get ready in the morning and probably if you had gifts, it's nice to see that reaction. And I think definitely if you're doing gifts, it's nice for that to be captured. So what you said, not essential, but a preference and I think it should be an important preference to have if the suppliers are able to do so. Yeah, I would agree. Um, I can talk about it more in depth if you want me to, um, but I feel like we've touched on it perfectly. I've actually got a question now. Okay. Most of the time, it's not often that I go to groom prep. I normally stick with the girls, and you go to the grooms. <laughs> I love I, the, is that I, you've got to say the girls. I love, the, the, say, girls. I love the fact that whenever we say girls or lads, it's like the lads or the girls. It's all going to be very emphasised. Who we're talking about? But so. 
is there anything unusual that happens in a groom prep? So like, I'm not a grass. Like, no, when like you're getting ready. Beth, can I just say, snitches get stitches, love. That's the way it is, and it's the way it's always been. Lads have got your back, don't you? Hey, <laughs> we know what happens in the lads' uh, groom prep game. Stays in the lads' groom prep room. You know what I mean? Now, to be fair, um, nothing, what do you mean? I know. That is a proper Mimi Bell events question, man. If yeah. I haven't I seen one. All, like, is it sort of I think, do they, like, do they all... So, do you know what I've seen? <laughs> now that we're talking on it, I mean, let's just go a bit more professional as well. And I'll get back in the room. I know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, like, I wouldn't say unusual, but I think it's when getting was- it's getting more interesting to be at lads' groom preps these days. Simply based on the fact that most modern men, let's just call them them, um, they're just a little bit more, like acceptable to be a little bit more like the bride. I don't know if that was the right sentence to use, but I mean, like we went to, where was I? I went to one just before Christmas. I'm not yes. even going to say where, but I went to one before Christmas. People just go on the podcast and go, it was there when... Yeah, West Tower. Um, <laughs> I went in there and we went into like where the lads were getting ready, basically, and I walked in there and they're all like, they've got the on trainees on, they've got the... The what trainees? On. On? What the hell's on? On cloud. Is on cloud. Oh my god, I'm out of the loop. I am out of the loop, aren't I? Oh my god, even Beth knew. Can we cut that bit out because that's just not cool place. for my but street rep and no, the boys. Keep that in. Okay. So they've got their own trainees on, they've got the Montrex full rig out trackies on, they've got the L- L- North Face caps on, and I mean, the laddest group of lads you can walk into, yeah. And they're all, wait there, and they're all sitting there playing on the PlayStation set off. They've all got like the cans out and all like that. Proper like men being men. Yeah. And then they're all sitting there with them little like I missed patches on you know, them gold things you can buy. What That's are they? Your little gold te- what gold are they called? Pleasure, what are they called? Nice one, Beth. Just dropping me right in. I've what got are they bags in my eyes constantly. What I'm a working called? man. I don't know. I don't know what they call. Maybe like you know, what I mean? they're like little, yeah, like like vitamins, little gold like vitamin eyes, strips yeah, that they put like, on the eyes. I'll go and get them down. Do you want to try? Do you want to do some now? We're going to do some in a minute. We'll yeah. put it on. That'll be the that be the end of the clip. No, that'll be the picture that becomes the thing. The, the social. So you just the like, You just sort of like try to like no laugh at their expense and then the end of the podcast. Not laughing at their expense. It's going to be a photo of me. I'm not laughing at their expense. Their but I did walk in there and like get off at the can as soon as I walked in the door and I thought yeah, in with the lads here and then I went hang on a minute. So in terms of like unusual, that would probably be deemed unusual in like about ten years ago. But it just shows how modern men are just so open. Yeah. I've just thought then, because obviously I've seen quite a lot of groom prep rooms that they have a barber's chair. Yeah. Is that like a thing? Like, would you freshly get your hair cut the morning of your wedding? I some, just I feel like that could do. be like disaster all over. Well, that, it is. It would it, be. Yeah. yeah, it would be if I got it wrong. <laughs> I've seen it once. I'm talking years ago as well when I turned up and the barber was just getting off and, and I and I, funny enough when I seen him I went that's such a great idea every single groomsman the father of the bride father of the groom and Fresh the groom taper. all looked on point yeah on point um, yeah, don't worry there don't worry Beth um, all looked on point and I thought do you know what when I go and see my barber I'm going to give him the Good idea shout. I said you're in the wrong business mate I said why wouldn't you get into that line of work and he said to be fair a lot of the lads who do come in who are getting married say they try and book it in you know yeah, like day before as close something. as they can that's what I did uh, did you? yeah but yeah um, good good question there because the barber chair is always a bit of a why is that there um, I think aesthetically it just looks quite cool yeah the it old looks nice in the room doesn't it? Chair, doesn't it I think he's got a boss one of them hasn't it Merrydale Merrydale and Col- shout oh, out Merrydale Col- it's Merrydale isn't it yeah they're yeah. like groom getting ready rooms, great. Owen House has as well. Owen House has got a very similar one. Shout out to Owen House. Um, getting all our shout outs last minute before we end the podcast. <laughs> shout out this, shout out that. Um, Just trying to show an unbiased view. <laughs> waiting for the sponsor, West Tower. You know where yeah, we are. Yeah, yeah. Um, anything to add before we wrap this week's podcast up? I'm trying to think if there was anything that we were thinking about before this show. There might be a slight delay between this week's. The last episode. This episode, Why? And maybe the next one, because you're just jetting off, just getting an off to foreign lands. These two, this podcast will <laughs> be out this week. Oop, because I'm going to edit it on Aldi, so it'll just be business as usual. What mm. day? Do you just get back next week. Thursday. It's Tuesday night. Essentially, record Listen. one on the Friday. Oh, so there won't be a break then, yeah, will we? No, we can do it on the Friday. Look what we're doing for you, hey. 
We can't do that to our listeners. Like, we have to keep going. <laughs> we have to do this. It's all four of you. We're not going to let you down. <laughs> Margie, Debbie, Abby, and whoever else listens. Josh's mum. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so much, anyway, for anyone who is listening. And, yeah, you know what? Definitely get in touch and let us know that you are listening because I think for us, it'll just give us a massive... Yeah, go, we, we love it when we when we get these little moments of feedback, don't we? Especially from people who wouldn't normally reach out or we wouldn't normally bump into stuff like that. So it is great. And it, it shows that we're on the right track because what we would hate is that we're going X far down the road with this and it just turns out that everyone's like, oh, I wish they'd shut up now. We want to gear it towards the audience. We want the audience to tell us what they want so we yeah. can push it in that direction. Yeah. And also... For the next few podcasts, we are going to have guests on, so it's not yeah. just going to oh be. Oh my god! Yeah. We've been saying that for so long. Yeah. We promise, like we, we pinky promise. Yeah, we're the desperate. Next, we're going to have to get <laughs> this, on this next, next episode on the Friday that we've just mentioned when we get back of Aldi. We're going to set it up so that we have got a guest. Mm-hmm. Um, oh my god, I can't even believe we haven't given this person as well another person, Estelle. Wow, we missed Estelle. How do we not mention Estelle? That's your fault. That that was on you. We've missed little Beth illustrations out as well. We did. We did. We, we, just just didn't, we, we just didn't. We just didn't say a full. Oh, yeah, we said didn't say a tag name, but like Estelle Lace, that's a that's a bad miss. That um, dropped the ball there. Dropped the ball. But yeah, we're definitely going to have for the next. I'd say I'm not even going to guarantee you this, but I think for the next five podcasts, it's going to be five guests on the bounce. Oof, I do. I think we'll have to because do you know what I think the biggest the biggest miss that we've had is when our original space got took away from us. Because oh. we're really, we're really like headstrong at the moment about giving this a HQ. And I mean, I know we're in a boss little space here in yours, but it's not ideal for like space. And especially if we're going to bring somebody else into the mix, as yeah. well as us three and Matty and then someone else or two other people. Yeah. Um, but also we're dead keen on getting like location based stuff. So we've got a few guests on who we would go to them rather than them come to us. 100%. But it's going to be guest city going forward. Let me just tell you that. And we are excited. Yeah. So big. obviously Beth is going to be the next one. That's the, that's your little clue there. Um, go and check it out. Glue. I'll just give you it away. Not really a clue if you tell people the answer. Imagine playing a game of guess who and starting with it's John from <laughs> 34. <laughs> got a hat and glasses on. Yeah, he is. He's got a hat and glasses on. His name's John. There's your clue. There's your clue. <laughs> He's bougie. Bougie to death. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Beth is going to be um, the next guest. And also go and give her Instagram a follow because I think she had a bit of trouble recently with her Instagram yeah, getting well, That's going to be a big a big talk for her, yeah. I think. And I, I think a big awakening for all of us within the industry of what it looks like when something like that happens to you because it probably like... Busy. Make her break, she doesn't it? But for her, she sounds like she's back on the way up. Yeah, she is. So, boss. I've seen that follow count. And hey, by Bethan. Go and follow. Um, and to add before we wrap it up do you want to say anything Beth do you want to, how do you feel that your first off, day Beth. in the hot seat's gone I feel like it's going okay you know I'm going to sign off with a little jingle I'm not sure what jingle <laughs> I hope, uh, wait there I hope she picks the creepy one. Oh, that was like a <laughs> yeah, perfect <laughs> <laughs> it's all being a big joke thank you for listening to the aisle chat <laughs>